tonight. And uh, you know, this music is a gift from our choir to you as a worship time for the Lord. It's for Him, but it's also for for you and for our community. And I'm so thankful for our music ministry, uh, Pastor Kevin, our choir, orchestra, instrumentalists, our sound lighting folks, uh, our decoration team, our safety team. Work very, very hard, many long hours to put this together for us. It's been an awesome experience the last night and tonight and for me personally. Tonight I'd like to give you an opportunity just to express thanks to Pastor Kevin and the choir and everybody who's put this together for us tonight. The main reason we share this is we really, we really want our community and the world to know that, um, that the baby does change everything, doesn't it? And that uh, he's God's gift to the world. He's God's gift to us. He's God's gift to me personally. He's worthy of our worship. And centrally, we need to remember that God sent him to the world to save, to save right sinners like us. We need to be saved. From his birth to his death, Jesus lived a sinless life where we could not. He was the second Adam. He was tempted in every point like us, yet without sin. And Jesus came ultimately to die for us, willingly. The Son of God taking on flesh to live a sinless life and to die. When He died on the cross, all of the justice that was destined to be poured out upon us, because God loved us, He chose to pour it out in Himself. So that He's been just. He has not been a hypocrite. He has stood behind his law. He has poured out his just judgment. And now at the same time, he can, uh, he can forgive us because of what Jesus did and give us the gift of eternal life. And that's the wonderful thing about it is that when we trust in Jesus, not only was my sin counted as his sin at the cross, but the Bible says his righteousness, Jesus' righteousness, his sinless life is credited to me. His record becomes my record. And that's why I can stand faultless before the throne of God someday. And that's a gift that God has given to us. Someone put it this way, Jesus never sinned, but he was treated as a sinner on the cross by the Father so that we who would trust in him don't have to be. We can be forgiven. Or somebody else put it, Jesus Christ was treated as we deserve so that when we believe in Jesus, God treats us as Jesus. Jesus deserves honor. Jesus is perfect. We're treated in that way. You know, maybe tonight you've been thinking about beginning a journey with Jesus, starting a relationship with Him, giving your life to Him, receiving that gift. Maybe you're scared, but you know something's going on inside and you need Him in your life. What a, what a wonderful time of the year, isn't it, to begin a relationship with Jesus. We want to give you an opportunity for you to do that. I'm not going to ask you to walk down the aisle or anything like that tonight. But in just a moment, I'm going to lead us in a simple prayer. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, and 10 that if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord, believe in our heart God raised Him from the dead, we shall be saved. And Paul goes on in verse 13 to say, Whosoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. Just call on Him in prayer. He doesn't care how the words come out of your mouth. He just wants to know are you willing to give your heart to me and trust me. So I'm ask you to bow your heads with me and close your eyes. I'm just going to lead us in a simple prayer. This expresses your desire tonight to begin that journey with Jesus. You can do it right now. And you just take these words and frame them somewhat for yourself before God. And uh, just as, as though it's just you and the Lord here right now in this moment. Call on him. So let's pray. You just you call on him right now. You need him as your Savior. Heavenly Father, thank you for creating me and giving me life. Lord, I know that you know that I have sinned and I have not lived perfectly. I deserve your just judgment. But I believe that Jesus Christ is your Son. That he came and lived a sinless life. That he 
died in my place for my sins on the cross. That he was buried and that he rose again. Lord, you tell me that if I will trust in him, you will forgive me, give me eternal life. And so, Lord, right now, this night, I call upon Jesus to be my Savior and my Lord. I turn from my sin as best I know and I receive him into my life. Take control of my life and make me the kind of person you want me to be. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the gift of forgiveness and eternal life. I praise you for it tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. If you haven't called the Lord tonight in some way and you want to talk further about it, my cell phone number is 864-617-9630. You can send me a text, either I or one of my pastors, church, serve alongside of me, we'll be glad to get in touch with you, and uh, share with you more, just to help me nail down the commitment that you made uh, to Jesus. Again, we thank you for being here with us uh, tonight. We're going to sing one more song in just a moment, but just want to invite you to a couple more things going on in our church. <coughs> that thing just hits me when I'm not expecting it. Uh, this coming night, Sunday night at 5.30, we have PJs with the pastor right in this room. It's uh, for anybody to come, but uh, we focus on our children, kindergarten through fifth grade. They dress up in their pajamas, and we come and we have a lot of fun. We sing some silly songs. We sing some Christmas songs. Um, usually they make fun of the staff on the screen sometimes. And then we gather up on the platform. My wife and I read a book uh, to the children, and uh, then we just have some cookies and fellowship time. I think there's something for some snow this year. It's just always a fun time to gather with, uh, with your family, your children, your grandchildren. So we invite you to that. It's just a really good time we have each year. Pajamas with the pastor. Pastors don't wear pajamas, just the kids. And then uh, on Christmas Eve at 6 o'clock, also we have a Christmas Eve service, just a simple service with some worship music and a brief message. Uh, but also, uh, in some scripture readings, there will be a time as well for you to be able to share the Lord's Supper. Those of you who are saved and baptized, we'll have your family with you. We'll have a way for you to kind of share in that as a family. Uh, just prepare your hearts for, uh, for Christmas morning. So again, thank you for being here uh, with us tonight. Our choir is going to lead us in one more song. And uh, I think when we come to the Hallelujah Chorus, we'll sing, stand, and worship the Lord through that great, great peace. And then you are dismissed, and we wish you all a very...
I ain't do it. This is fun, wouldn't it? Huh? It takes a lot of work to do that. A lot of work. Let's see. Let's see, Cliff. We'll see y'all.